Konani Kamangunusipo. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about e makeup. When last did I sit down and only film makeup? No added, no ifs, no buts. Not using makeup to decorate a chit chat. Just talking about makeup. It's been a long time. I'm actually nervous about this. I don't think I'm good at it anymore. But today's video is about my foundation routine or rather my face routine, my go to face routine. When I actually want to look extra super duper cute, this is what I do. So I felt I would share with share it with you guys because I think my makeup in terms of my face game has improved and I just wanted to share it with you guys so if you're interested in seeing how I created this base then do keep watching and what else thank you so much for supporting me Gantanda I appreciate you all of the good things if you haven't subscribed subscribe and join the family but until the next clip I love you guys all so so much and God ever stay blessing you Mwah. okay so to kick off this little updated foundation routine that we're going to be doing i'm just gonna do some skin work so i really feel like making sure that your foundation looks a certain way or looks flawless on your skin all starts with skin prep and just making sure that you look after your skin so it stays as smooth as you can manage for it to stay and that will make sure that your foundation on top of your skin looks as good as it possibly can so for skin prep i'm going to be using a serum and I'm gonna mix it in with some of this primer from Revlon so the serum that we're going to be using is the Estee Lauder advanced night repair serum so I'm just gonna squeeze some of this out so I'm also just gonna apply the serum with a brush because I do want it to seep right into the skin so I'm swiping it as though I'm applying foundation and then just patting it into the skin Okay, then the next thing that we're going to be using, as I mentioned, is this Rose Glow Hydrating Illuminating Primer from the Revlon Candid Range. And this is what that looks like. So it's just a liquid primer and then it's got some glitter gold flakes inside it. And these gold flakes actually do show up on your skin. So it's also just got a pipette just like the Estee Lauder. And I'm not going to be taking too much of it. Um, because I don't want to have too much of the glitter on my face when I am rocking my bare skin though I do really like to use this because it looks very nice on bare skin Then now to actually prime prime the skin especially in the areas that I crease a lot Which is my under eye and around my smile lines. I'm going to be using the benefit professional primer this is a very very small sample size i actually need to go get a new one this primer is a silicone based primer i really like it because it does fill in your pores so it's called a professional because it's supposed to be a pore filling primer and i really feel like it does do that it does fill in your pores and it makes your skin look quite flawless as you guys can see over here it gives your skin a very very airbrushed look so i am a very big fan of this which is why i need to get the full size now especially because my travel size is almost finished so i just put it around the areas where i crease the most and where i feel i have the biggest pores a trick that i found to be helpful that i've been using recently or lately is setting my primer so i'm going to be going in with this powder and this is my black opal deluxe finishing powder i have obviously misplaced the lid i genuinely don't know where this lid is i have been looking for it and i cannot find it so i set around my smile line so i puff out my cheeks and set in that primer So it's a good idea to use a powder that's at least close to your skin tone so it doesn't look like a very very wide cast once you've put on your foundation and other complexion products okay so then next up we're going to be doing our foundation and the foundations that i've been liking using is this revlon candid foundation and this is in the shade i'm holding the wrong one i have two i have 530 and i have 550 they're dirty excuse me but this is what the foundations look like and the shade that i've been liking using is the shade 530 because that's the one that matches my complexion the best i also use it to conceal my eyebrows so i cleaned up my eyebrows using this foundation and i mix this in with my mac studio fix 
fluid and this is in the shade nc50 and the reason why i like to mix these two together is because my nc50 is actually a tad bit too dark for me i'm nc47 but when i went to go buy this foundation there was no nc47 at the time so i had to buy nc50 because also nc45 <laughs> was way too light so i had to buy the nc50 but i like the undertone because it's a good match to my undertone but the shade is a tad bit dark so i mix it in with some of this just one pump of this and a half uh -huh. <laughs> this is how much foundation that i've put on my hand and we're going to be applying that on the face using a brush and then we're going to set it using a beauty blender so this combination of these two foundations i find matches my skin tone really nicely matches my undertone really nicely and the revlon um candid foundation isn't too high coverage or too heavy whereas the mac studio fix fluid is a heavy duty foundation so i really like the combination of these two together because it doesn't give me too much cake but it gives me very very beautiful coverage and the studio fix fluid is quite the matte foundation whereas the candid foundation is a more dewy foundation so i get a nice in-between mix when i use both of the foundations together Another lovely thing about this Revlon Candid Foundation is that it doesn't dry too quickly. So it also helps out the MAC Studio Fix because the MAC Studio Fix actually does dry quite quickly. So when you use both of them, it's a very, very nice balance. And it gives you some leg room and some working room with your foundation, especially if you do um, a routine like mine where you first start off with a brush and then go ahead and use a sponge afterwards. Another thing that I've been doing is just running the brush with my foundation through the front of my brows because I've been finding that my brows sometimes look a little little bit harsh in the front which I don't like too much so I also just run my brush through my brows to make sure that my foundation is blended nicely and my brows don't look too harsh okay so this is what the skin work looks like with just the foundation now we're going to move on to some concealer so the concealer that i've been liking to use or concealers that i've been liking to use is also the revlon Can the revlon candid um concealers and these are the two shades that i've been using this is shade 60 and shade 65 so these concealers i really like because they have a very yellow undertone and over and above that they have this doe foot applicator which looks like this, if you guys can see it. I'm not sure if that's too bright, but it has a doe foot applicator. And this doe foot applicator honestly makes applying the concealer so much easier than trying to um, apply it using a brush or trying to apply it by pouring it or anything of that nature. So the shape of it also allows you to get under the crevice of your eye. So I start with shade number 65, which is naturally the darker shade. And because I have gained a little bit of charm, Chub chub. <laughs> and I am trying to make my face look a lot more snatched these days as I or rather than I used to in the past I try to concentrate my product towards the center of my face and then I try not to blend it out too far because if I blend it out too far then I'm obviously going to make my face look wider it's already wide enough <laughs> so that's not what we're trying to do at the moment so I blend some of the concealer onto my nose and onto the sides of my nose then we're going to blend that in. It helps us snatch the nose as well. I do also add some of this concealer over my upper lip. Because I do feel like I have a moustache <laughs> situation going on over there. So I add some concealer there too. Then I also go in over my nose. Obviously traditional highlighting places. Alright. And then I also add some to my forehead. Because I am part of the three head gang. Definitely not part of the five head gang. So I do feel like my forehead is a little bit small So I highlight more than I contour around my forehead area because I am trying to have my forehead look a little bit bigger So the other thing that I've been doing is I've been letting except for the foundation of the concealer on my forehead Is I've been letting my concealer sit for a little bit because I found that that gives me a lot more concentration of the product and it also helps me achieve a more brightened effect than for me to just um blend out the concealer immediately after i've applied it as i'm doing on my forehead and as you can see that brightens up the forehead really really nicely but i don't want my forehead to now look like a light bulb which is why i blend it out immediately and i also blend it out using the same brush that i used to blend in my foundation to ensure a seamless blended face 
Then while we're letting that concealer sit, a new thing that I've been doing is I've been using a foundation and I'm using this Rimmel Colorstay foundation to contour my face. I do mix it in with the Revlon foundation though because this shade is pretty pretty dark as you guys can see that's the shade of the foundation so that is quite dark for me to use just isolated on its own that will definitely make my um contour look really gray and ashy so i mix it in with just a tiny 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 bit of my mac studio fix foundation and then we apply it after we've mixed it in a little bit and lightened up the foundation a little bit the reason why I've taken to cream contouring, which isn't something that I typically did before, is because my face, guys, is so round at the moment and gainy. I've gained so much weight. I'm like over 60 kilograms now, and that for me is a lot because I'm quite short, contrary to popular belief and contrary to what everybody who meets me thinks, which is that I'm tall. I am not a tall human being, so with my height, 60 kilograms is a lot of weight. So my face definitely is looking a lot rounder, is looking a lot chubbier and I have been feeling really insecure about the shape of my face and the roundness of my face and just overall my general weight gain. So I have been contouring a lot more purposefully <laughs> and intentionally as opposed to how I usually do it where I was just doing it so I had a flash of colour. Now I'm doing it because I really need to, which is also why I've gone darker with the shade that I am using because I need the shadow. I need the shadow to save my life. I need it. I need it. I need it. Next up, we're going to be tackling this concealer. I'm just going to take my setting spray, wet my brush a little bit because now obviously my concealer is pretty dry and then we're going to start patting the product in so the nice thing about letting the concealer sit as i mentioned is it concentrates that concealer in one place so when you start blending it it doesn't go everywhere but you also ensure that you have a more prominent dominant highlight then to set my face i'm going to be using just want to show you guys this revlon two powders the black opal powder and this revlon candid powder and this is in the shade 002 the lovely thing about this revlon candid powder is it's very 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 finely milled so it literally makes your skin look absolutely flawless so as you guys can see this is the side where i've applied the powder and this is the side without the powder and you can see that very airbrushed effect that it creates so i really really like using this powder as my first set then i take the same brush and now we go ham with the powder underneath the eyes because this is now my baking powder and then i just take some of that powder to enhance the contour that i definitely need just to make sure that we have a very nice chiseled look to the contour then while i let my bake sit i'm going to take my inglot powder this is nothing new this is definitely a very well known part of my routine and i'm just going to be taking this powder to contour my nose and then to also set the areas that i contoured with the cream foundation just to make sure that we then get that flushed bronze effect bring some more color to the face and we set the contour then i'm going to be taking a smaller brush a pencil shaped or tapered brush and I'm going to be using that to powder contour my nose. I still use powder to contour my nose because I do feel like the cream goes a little bit too harsh sometimes. It's a little bit too ham and I don't really like it too much. So I still use powder to contour my nose. Then the trick to making sure that your nose contour blends in very nicely with the rest of your face is to bring it up into your eyebrow which is why it's also really important to have a transition shade up there because usually this blends in really nicely with the transition shade and because your nose doesn't just start halfway here and it obviously starts all the way there with your eyebrows it's really important to blend right under there to start your nose contour from there because it will give your nose a more cinched look and it will definitely make your nose look or your nose contour look a lot more natural and a lot more blended okay so now that we're done with the contour now we can dust away the bake so i'm going to be using two products so i usually used to use this mac mineralized skin ooh, mineralized skin finish in the shade dark 
and what i usually used to use this for was as my all over face shade but i've started to realize that i feel like this is a little bit too bright for my overall face shade so i got this studio fix powder and this is an actual face setting powder this is in the shade nc47 that they didn't have before when i went to go buy one of these powders which is why i just bought the mineralized skin finish in dark so now i use this as my all over face shade and then i use whoops whoops my mineralized skin finish as my under eye setting shade they look pretty close when you look at them but because the mineralized skin finish isn't necessarily a face complexion product so it doesn't have a lot of pigment in it so it really doesn't give your skin too much tint to it whereas the studio fix powder does pack a lot of punch when it comes to pigment and actually staining or coloring the skin so it does appear a lot darker than the mineralized skin finish does then once I've dusted away all my bake with my mineralized skin finish, then I pick up my Studio Fix powder and then I just tap a little bit into this product because as I mentioned, there is a lot of pigmentation in this product and then I just use it to now blend my whole face. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight the face. So another thing that I've taken to doing recently to highlight my face so that's changed in my routine is i use the same brush that i just used to contour my face to highlight my face and i also use two different highlighter shades so please don't mind my highlighter palettes i'm using my carly bible palette if you guys can see it's white inking it's white so <laughs> i don't think you're gonna see it anywhere but skin now i use these two shades it's a mess but there's this shade right over here which is like a darker goldish bronze shade and then this very very gold shade so i'm going to start with this one and then we're going to use this one on top to enhance the highlight so the reason why i use the same brush is i feel like it helps blend the highlight in with the contour really really nicely so to highlight my face i use the c shape so I highlight over my cheekbone or the high points of my cheekbone and I bring it all the way up towards my eyebrow. And once I've placed the initial product, then I go in with the brighter highlights just to add a little bit more pop to the highlights. Then for the nose, because we're all about the precision, I use the lighter shade of gold because it just looks really odd when you add a very dark highlighter shade onto your nose so i don't use the bronze i use the lighter shade of gold and then i first start by highlighting the tip of my nose and then i precisely go ahead and then highlight the bridge of my nose so i don't draw a line from the top all the way down i leave a little gap there because that creates the illusion of a button nose and it just doesn't look strange i think it looks really 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 strange when you just have a straight straight line going all the way from the top of your nose all the way to the tip of your nose of highlighter to me that just looks odd and i don't really like the look of it so i don't do it if it's your vibe then i mean definitely go for it but i'd suggest that you leave this gap because it is a lot more realistic the light hits your nose on the tip and on the bridge over there not all the way down so it's unnecessary to put highlight all the way down the bridge of your nose then I'm going to use that lighter shade of gold to also highlight my brow bone. I go ham on the highlight on the brow bone because I just think it looks so pretty. There's nothing prettier than especially having the C shape on your face and then having this brow bone highlight. It just looks so beautiful together. I love it so much. To line the lips, I'm just using this brown pencil that I got from China Mall. It's just a standard brown pencil. It was five rand, so... That's what we're using to line. And if you guys are wondering where I got my lashes, I got my lashes from China Mall. Got the pencil from China Mall. Got the eyeshadow palette that I used from China Mall. Most of the things I'm using here, except for the complexion products, are from China Mall. So if you are on a budget and you're just starting out with makeup, and even if you are not starting out with makeup and you're just on a budget and you don't want to spend too much money, definitely check out China Mall for the plug for really cheap palettes that's makeup palettes that's eyeshadow palettes that's glow palettes just like anything channel mall has everything guys it really has everything so definitely do check it out for most of your makeup needs then the next thing that i'm going to do 
if I can find the stuff that I need to do what I need to do is I'm going to do my lips. So I'm going to be doing a peachy nude look today because I feel like it will go really nicely with this. So I'm going to be using these two chubby cushion lip tints from Revlon. So the coral one and the nude one. I'll add the names of these things in the description box so you guys can see them. We're starting off with the coral. And then I'm just going to blend in my lip liner with that. But I'm going to add this nude shade as well to the center of the lips. So it's a very metallic-y looking nude. So I really love the effect that it gives to the lips. And because as of late, I am obsessed with gloss I always wear gloss so I'm just gonna be taking my Elizabeth Arden 8 hour look therapy cream and we're going to be adding that on top which gives a very very beautiful high shine also moisturizes your lips like a mother so if you're needing something that does both and does both really well check this stuff out obviously it's Elizabeth Arden so it's a bit more on the pricey side so Essence also has some really nice lip glosses that you can check out for a fraction of the price. Also lasts really long, also looks really good. But I love this stuff and I have it so that's what I'm going to use as well. This is me guys, this is it. This is what this face looks like and I think it looks pretty good. I think the highlight is popping, the lashes came on nice. The eyeshadow turned out really good with the whole added effects. And I'm a blondina, so of course blondes have more fun. So I think this came out pretty, pretty good. So let me fix my hair, finish off the video, and make an intro. All right, so pretty much for me, that's it. The jig is up, the delay. And this is my new face routine. This is how I've been doing my face, how I've been putting things together and laying it down. The eyeshadow look, though, if you guys want to see, do let me know. Hit me up in the comments down below, and I'll definitely create the look for you. There isn't much to it, though. It's literally just you two colors, but... And guys, I'm based on Sophia's toilet with seven colors now. Corner pambili. So if you guys are interested in me creating any other eyeshadow looks and other words, that's what I'm trying to say. Then do let me know. But if you want to see this one specifically, say so too, and I'll do it for you guys. But until the next video, I love you guys all so so much. Again, tanda no get emakaya, and I'll see you all in my next video. God bless.